Welcome, Algebra 1. This is Chapter 4, What is a Function, Part 3. The essential question, how do you write a formula for the graph of a linear function? So this is Part 3. I reorganized Chapter 4. And in Parts number 1 and 2, we did a lot of that in Part number 1. I think this was Part number 2. Well, Part number 3 is our last part of this, and we want to write a rule for the linear pattern. We talked a little bit about this in class. I just kind of want to formalize it. So what we did in class last week is I asked we looked at a, a linear function here, a bunch of dots, and we explained how the line changes. So we, when we did that in class, sometimes you'd say, OK, it's every time the dot's going to the right two and going up one. And you'd say things like that. So that's a good thing to recognize here. That's what we need to do to write the equation or rule for a linear function. So the first thing you want to answer is, how do the points change? It goes up and down by how many, and it's going right by how many. And you did those last week. So you want to be able to answer that. And the other thing you need to answer is, where does it start? So the line, and when I say where it starts, is where, where is it when x equals 0? What is the value for y at that point? We call that the y-intercept. So you need to find out where x equals 0, and that happens on the y-axis. And you tell me, where, what is the value for y at that point when x equals 0? So those are the two things you need to know. So let's go back to this function. How do the points change? Well, we can say over here, to write that in words, we can say, well, every time you change the, you move in the points, the points are moving up one and right two. So I can say up one, and then we can go right two. It's kind of following this pattern where it's going up one, right two, up one, right two, up one, right two. It's following that pattern. So where is it starting, though? And when I'm asking where does it start, well, it starts where x equals zero. x equals zero happens on this y-axis right here. I'll put a big red line right here. This is the y-axis. So where does this? Where is when x equals 0, what does y equal? And you look right here, it's at the point right there. And it's not, you have to kind of look at that and figure it out. It's halfway between 1 and 0. So it actually starts at y equals halfway between that is 0 0.5. So that's where it starts. So the rule is up 1, right 2, and it starts where y equals 0 0.5. All right, let's look at another one. So how do the points change? And what's going on here is it's going up one, right one, up one, right one. So I'm going to write up one, and then right one. This is, the, this is the pattern, how the dots are changing every time. And where does it start? Well, it's starting on right here when x equals 0. And this is also called the y-axis. And it's starting where x right here, and that's at y equals 3. So up one, right one, and it's starting at y equals 3. So we use that information to actually write a rule from the words, so a rule or equation. And our rule is going to be in the form of an equation. Here's the form right here, y equals mx plus b. Well, we actually plug in some value for m and some value for b. But what do we plug in for those? We actually use those answers to those two questions you just wrote. So how do the points change? Well, that tells us what our m is going to be. m is going to be a fraction. On the top, you put how much you're going up or down. So if you go up 3, you go plus 3. If you go down, let's say you went down 3, you'd go minus 3. And on the bottom, or the denominator of the fraction, you're going to write, you're going to put down how many units you went to the right. So if you went 2 units to the right, you're going to write 2 there. So you come up with some fraction, and the fraction might be in the form 3 over 2 or whatever. So that's what m is going to be. And the second thing, where does it start? That's what we plug in for b. So b is the y-intercept, or that y value when x equals 0. So whatever number that is, so if that was, so let's do an example. For example, if my, my m here, how the points change, if that was 3 over 2, and let's say my b happened at 3, then I would plug those values into the equation. So instead of getting y equals mx plus b, so instead for m, I'm going to erase that. I'd erase that m, and instead for m, I'm going to put in this 3 halves. So I'd write 3 halves. And instead of b, I say b is 3, I would, I would substitute in a3 for b. So the rule might look something like this. So that's what we do. We find the m and the b, and we substitute that in to write the rule. So let's go back to those original equations. So how did the point change? And we said in this, this is that first one, we said it went up 3, oh wait, up 1, and we said it went right 2. And so if it went up 1, right 2, if I wanted to write an equation for that, and it's it's going to, m is up or down, so m is going to be a fraction, right? 
and it's going up. So on the top, I put a 1, positive 1. In the, on the bottom, you put how many is going to the right. So you put 2. So your m is going to be 1 half. Now, where does it start? Well, I said last time it starts at y equals 0 0.5. So guess what? b equals 0 0.5. Now, if I want to plug those into that equation, y equals mx plus b. Well, it's going to be y equals m is going to be 1 half. So I'll write that 1 half times x. And then instead of plus b, it's going to be plus 0 0.5. So that's your answer. There's your rule for this linear function. y equals 1 half x plus 5 tenths. All right, let's start, look at a different one. So another example, we said, how does the point change? We said it went up 1, and then went right 1. And where does it start? We said it started at 3. So if it's up 1, right 1, my m is going to be have a positive 1 on top and a positive 1 on bottom. So 1 over 1, we can write that as just 1. And the, so m equals 1. On the bottom, that means b equals 3. So I can write an equation, y equals 1x plus 3. And you don't even need to write that 1x. You can just write y equals x plus 3. So either of those would be your rule for the equation. So let's try some examples. Pause the video. All right, write the rule for the graph of the line. So the, the, things you need, the, rule, the form for the rule is y equals mx plus b. And your m is how much that's changing, right? So the m equals the how much it's moving up and down on the bottom and how much it's moving to the right. Uh, up and down is on the top, right? So going from this point to this point, it looks like it's going up 1, and it's going right 1. So I'm going to say r1. So up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. So up 1, I'm going to write a 1 on top. And right 1, I'm going to write a 1 on the bottom. So that simplifies to 1. Now for b, that's going to be where it crosses when x equals 0. And that happens right at this dot at 6. So b equals 6. So that means my final equation, my final rule is going to be y equals 1x plus 6. Or you can write it as y equals x plus 6, because the 1 doesn't matter. All right, try a different one. Pause the video. OK, same thing here. So I want to figure out my m first. So what's the rule here? Well, it's going down. 2, right 1. So I'm going to say down 2, or d2, and it's going right 1. I'll say r1. And it's doing that down 2, right 1. So since it's going down this time, I don't put, and it's going down 2, I don't put positive 2, I put negative 2. Going down 2 would be negative 2, and it's going right 1, so I'll put 1 on the bottom. So that's negative 2 over 1, which simplifies to negative 2. For your b, which is where, where it starts, that's going to happen right here, at 8. So my formula is going to be y equals negative 2x plus 8. And that is your rule. That's it.